heavy water cooled touring breeder reactor and static molten salt breeder. I'm Naoyuki Takaki, a professor of Tokyo City University. Before coming to university, I dedicated 16 years to TEPCO, uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company. In TEPCO, I was in charge of developing a uh, sodium cooled fast breeder reactor and uh, advanced light water reactor. I'd like to introduce three concepts. Uh, one is heavy water cooled thorium thermal breeder reactor. It's a can do type. Second one is uh, heavy water cooled thorium fast breeder fast rea breeder reactor. It is PWR type. And last one is a uh, molten salt, but uh, it's static molten salt reactor uh, proposed by Moltex Energy, uh, British company. And uh, I'll touch on the proliferation concerns of sodium cycle. Uh, why breeder? This is a famous, maybe famous figure. Uh, it shows the relation between uranium utilization factor and the conversion ratio. Once the conversion ratio exceeds one, the uranium utilization factor or thorium utilization factor uh, drastically improved like this. And this graph shows the uh, uranium utilization factor uh, as a function of burn up and also uh, recovery loss of actinides each at each reprocessing. Higher run up is preferable to achieve good uh, utilization factor. The monju uh, is not designed to burn actinides, means uh, burn minor actinides, and it, uh, minor actinides are disposed. Recovery loss is not so small, the, the, the factor is not so large. But the Japan sodium fast breeder reactor, it is planned, it was planned to uh, construct by 2030 uh, before the Fukushima accident, but uh, the, the plan is not so clear. Uh, uh, JSFR has tried to achieve almost 100% uh, factor by reducing recovery loss less than 0.1% and achieving uh, burn up of about 10%. Molten salt reactor uh, usually use continuous reprocessing, especially for the breeder reactor. It needs to uh, reprocess continuously, means a low burn up. So it must be achieve high, uh, low, very low recovery loss. Okay, th these are pros of MSR, and uh, also uh, some cons exist. Uh, from my viewpoint of view, I, I'm very user conscious. So, uh, in that sense, uh, uh, fuel short circuit through whole primary system is uh, causes uh, some problem in maintenance and operation, and. Uh, as you know, the heat exchanger is a uh, accurate here uh, of any kinds of plant, including coal fire plants. Uh, so the integrity is uh, also uh, very difficult because there's more than sort, including actinides and the fission products, uh, uh, circulate. The incentive of my study: Why water cooled? Uh, and oxide fuel. Almost uh, all of you prefer liquid type, but uh, it's a very well established plant technology and fuel technology. These are not to be uh, undervalued. We have large uh, experience on this. And uh, why thorium? I have maybe different reasoning. Uh, uh, the thorium has potential to breed fuel with negative void coefficient. This is very difficult for uranium and plutonium FBR. Uh, if you want to breed fuel, you, you have positive void effect. If you want to 
uh, it's vice versa for the uranium plutonium cycle. And uh, by using thorium, we can, uh, there's a possibility to avoid uh, severe energetics during core disruptive accident. Uh, the, almost all FBR is designed as a, not as a uh, most reactive configuration. It means if the core collapsed, uh, the reactivity may increase. But uh, using thorium, we can, uh, we have possibility to avoid that. That is my <laughs> motivation to chase thorium. Of course, to diversify energy source, and uh, it has smaller production. These are merits. So I'll touch on the first one, uh, the thermal type breeder. Can do reactor is a very nice plant. We can make can do reactor uh, breeder without any major change for the core. This graph uh, is a little complicated, but uh, uh, this means uh, Low uranium-233 enrichment in thorium and uranium oxide fuel meets breeding conditions. If we use uh, 1.4 weight percent uranium-233 in thorium fuel, it can breed fuel, but it has a short, smaller burn-up. If we in increase the enrichment, we can extend the burn-up, but uh, we lose breeding performance. Uh, these are several design of fuel bundles. First one is for sustainer. Uranium, thorium, and uranium-233 oxide fuel, uh, including 1.4% uranium-233, uh, can be a sustainer. Uh, and uh, we can also use MOX fuel. Uh, in the second uh, case, uh, we can, in this case, we can sustain uranium-233 and also we can consume plutonium. And uh, also we can extend the burn-up to 7.9 gigawatt per ton. It's a little larger than current can do. Uh, third one is uh, natural uranium-supported uranium-233 breeder. Uh, in this case, only seven pins in a bundle is a uh, thorium uranium 233 fuel. In this case, the compound system doubling time is very short, only 13 years. Only 13 years, we can make one more uh, this can do reactor. So we are very close to the to materialized breeder reactor by using or by using can do and yeah of course there are some problems we have to be solved and the second one is PWR type fast thorium breeder reactor it's a plant concept is basically the same as current PWR but the fuel was changed a uh, coolant primary coolant is totally replaced by heavy water and the fuel, fuel pin is arranged in a triangle arrangement to, uh, to shorten the pitch of fuel, between fuels. So the fuel bundle, fuel assembly shape becomes hexagonal. The, the core with 19 control rod has enough margin to shut down even for the uh, cold shutdown uh, condition. This is a spectrum of the reactor. A green one, green one is a current UO2 light water reactor. And the blue one is a MOX sodium cooled fast breeder reactor. Red one is a, a heavy water cooled PWR thorium breeder. As you can see, the spectrum is very close to the sodium-cooled fast breeder. This core has fast neutrons, so the fast neutron fluence must be very high. The zero-calorie cladding, maybe we cannot use zero-calorie, 
so we need new one. So I, uh, sub, uh, I suppose uh, silicon carbide cladding instead of zircaloy. Uh, in this case, we can uh, the fast food events maybe within the limitation. Uh, of silicon carbide, and also we can reduce the risk of hydrogen generation, hydrogen gas generation. Uh, performances of this concept, it has similar output with similar core size, with current uh, PWR. It's a homogeneous hexagonal tight pin pitch core. Moderator to fuel volume ratio is less than one. Uh, breeding with negative void coefficient. This is the most uh, 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 good, good uh, performance. Uh, higher burn up than light water reactor. It achieves about 70 or 80 gigawatt per ton. Acceptably small fissile heavy metal inventory. Actually, this cause uh, the, the inventory is almost double compared to the current PWR. And the fissile material, fissile inventory also higher, but uh, this is fast core, so it's normal. And the deployment scenario, I also examined deployment scenario. First one is uh, current phase light water reactor using uranium oxide. And the sustainer uh, phase uh, we can use the uh, thorium uranium 233 fuel with the uh, heavy water PWR. The problem is transition phase. Uh, the, in the transition phase, we can use the same core for the sustainer phase. And the fissile material is provided, fissile plutonium is provided from the current phase cycle. And uh, we can, we mix the plutonium with thorium for the transition uh, phase core. And the transition phase core produce uranium-233 to, to deploy new uh, sustainer phase reactor. Uh, assuming 60 gigawatt uh, to total capacity is very close to the Japanese capacity before the Fukushima accident, or like you want to light water reactor can be replaced within one century, considering the uh, mass balance. Cost reduction factors for the thorium reactor, uh, it's no need for enrichment, and the proven PWR technology can be applied. Less expensive uh, resource, and thorium must be cheaper than uranium. And the cost increase factors, uh, we have to use heavy water, expensive heavy water uh, current, and it, it means we have more tritium. And the, this is a key uh, problem, challenging reprocessing technology. We don't have any uh, commercial uh, reprocessing technology now. This is the most uh, big problem. And the high gamma, like, high gamma fuel handling. Uh, this is a result of, the, of our uh, cost evaluation. There are many uncertain factors for the thorium cycle, so we assume low case, high case, and the nominal case. For the all, all cases, the cost uh, is smaller than the light water reactor's uh, cost, evaluated by Federation of Electric Power Companies in Japan. But it's, the data is a little bit old, before the Fukushima accident data. Japan Atomic Energy Agency also evaluates the cost for the sodium cooled fast breeder reactor. It's, it's cheaper than the light water reactor. I don't know why <laughs> this is true or not. But uh, anyway, uh, our, our heavy water thorium breeder reactor's cost is not so uh, different. The last one is uh, static molten fuel, molten salt breeder. This is uh, pro proposed by Mortex Energy, uh, Dr. Ian Scott. I visited him this February. The most prominent uh, design is they use a pin-type uh, molten fuel. Uh, 
molten uh, fuel, liquid fuel is contained and encapsulated in a pin. So the oxidized or fission product doesn't go out from the core, don't, don't, does not circulate the heat exchanger. So for me, this is very reasonable concept. And uh, they use a chloride salt for fuel and a fluoride salt for coolant. And I, we reproduce their design in my in a computer and they evaluate plastic neutron absorption rate. The main contributor, except for fuel itself, is a chlorine 35 and uh, potassium 39, the chromium 90. Yeah, uh, so the, anyway, the chlorine 35 neutron absorption is very large. Uh, this uh, worsens the breeding performance. So we made some modification to the original uh, static molten salt reactor. One is chlorine composition. We change the norm, normal composition by from from no, no natural composition to enriched uh, enriched composition. Chlorine thirty nine is enriched to hundred percent. Of course, it's costs, but uh, uh, we are check now. We are checking the neutronic performance only now uh, to reduce uh, uh, plastic absorption. Second one is. Uh, we change the current because fluoride salt is really bad for fast, fast breeder reactor. I mean, uh, it consumes neutrons and uh, it worsens the spectrum. The uh, elastic cross section is not so small for fluoride. Uh, red color line shows the original static molten salt reactor. It has very short burn up. And uh, if we, we use uh, enriched chlorine 39 fuel salt, uh, burn up is extended somehow, but it's not so much. And we change the current salt to sodium. We have plenty of experience. Okay. Plenty of experience for the sodium plant. United States almost uh, uh, construct uh, commercial fat breeder reactor about 30 years ago, Green River. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, we have uh, technologies. The performance uh, for the reference static reactor and the modified one is uh, shown here. Uh, blue, blue bar shows the burn up. Uh, by using sodium current, the burn up drastically uh, improved up to 330 gigawatt day per ton. And the conversion ratio exceeds one. And the plutonium breeding gain is, uh, becomes positive value. And the uh, we assume slightly amount of uh, minor oxidants included in the uh, fresh fuel. So the uh, minor oxidants can be burned for all cases. I'll touch on the proliferation concerns. Uh, there are some index for to, to evaluate proliferation resistance. Uh, gamma dose, critical mass, enrichment technology, implosion technology, heat production. Uranium-235 doesn't uh, produce, uh, doesn't have high gamma dose, but it requires enrichment technology. It's very diff difficult technology. For plutonium, uh, more difficult technology, implosion technology is required. But the uh, run to 33 doesn't require both enrichment and implosion. But uh, it is often said thorium cycle is high proliferation resistance, but uh, because of high gamma dose. But, uh, Japan is now considering all minor, all oxygen closed system 
in that case, we need to uh, use uh, remote handling for fabrication and reprocessing. So the high gamma dose doesn't have meaning before compared to the past. So the, I'm wondering, thorium cycle uh, proliferation resistance. Maybe I'd like to have some of your comments. Conclusion, can do type thermal breeder reactor is the most promising for near-term introduction if the commercial reprocessing technology is developed. PW type thorium breeder reactor based on proven technology can be deployed as dominant, I mean, major energy source within a century. A static molten salt reactor requires chlorine satin enriched fuel salt. And the sodium current is better from Newtonic point of view. And the lastly, very last slide, what I want to share with you participants for the, this conference, breeding is a key for sustainable society. Thorium shows some preferable characteristics, but it's not magic fuel. Basically, it's the same as uranium. Thorium reactor produces similar nuclear waste if the cycle is not closed. Closing the cycle just minimizes the waste and maximizes the resources, regardless of uranium or thorium. Thank you very much.